super soft fabric ink. And it is seriously, this shirt, um, dyed it and did not even wash it. And it is, I just, we were prepping for the video. I was like, this is really soft. I put it on as one of our samples. Um, but it is truly, really soft. It is not crunchy. Um, and this hasn't even been washed. So you can just see, um, I wish you guys could feel that it's really soft once it dries. So it is an amazing product. Um, so fabric creations, we're gonna be using that. Shibori is a technique. It's a very old technique that is typically done with um, buckets and sticks and stones and indigo dye. And it's very time consuming and very messy. So we have been able to recreate that using um, some household items. And again, the fabric creations paint um, and you get the same look and you can do the same techniques and get all these beautiful um, designs and patterns. So a little bit different than tie dye. Um, and we're gonna be actually teaching a couple tie dye classes coming up in the next few weeks. And that's where we use a ton of color, a lot of very traditional tie dye effects and um, very different from the shibori. So shibori is all about the folding um, process of it and where you place the dye. So again, some great examples. We're gonna um, show you guys this pattern. So this is a triangle fold, so we can walk you through that. We have um, this dress. So Jessie did this class last week and she wore a dress like this, a long sleeve dress, and everybody was commenting. So we promised we would show you guys. So I'm gonna get started by showing you how to make this. And this is just a long sleeve t-shirt. Um, so the paint, I know people probably will have a couple questions um, about the paint. So it works on tight knit um, weave fabric. So you can use cotton, you can use something that has like some polyester or spandex in it. That's what's also so great about not using like a traditional dye or um, the pure indigo. This will work on any fabric, which is really great. It opens up so many different things that you can work, um, use. Um, again, I'm going to show you how to do it on clothing. You could do it on just fabric. Right now, sometimes it's even hard to get fabric, but we actually bought a shower curtain and a sheet, and we're able to cut that up and dye on that. Um, Michaels has a lot of great services. Like I said, you can get so much of this at Michaels. So you can do a tote bag, which they sell these. They come in a one pack or like a three pack. Um, again, the t-shirts from Michaels are really great. So, so many things you can do. This is um, some fabric that we dyed and then put it in a, um, like a hoop, like a quilting hoop, just popped it right in there. And that's a great way, you know, you can hang this on your wall, do all kinds of wall decor, add it to your gallery wall. You could frame this so you get a really pretty pattern and you could put that right in a frame. So, so many different things you can do with the fabric once you dye it. Um, also, this needs to be, um, you do not have to wash your fabric um, beforehand. It's recommended because there's typically sizing in your clothing, but you can, like some of the stuff we haven't washed, but you, you can, that's like best practice, but it will work if you feel like, oh, I didn't wash it or I don't have time, don't worry about it. You can just go ahead and dye it. Um, you do want to heat set this. Once it is dry, completely dry, you want to um, put it on low dry heat in your dryer or a um, dry iron but their directions are on the bottle. So you do want to heat set it, but then you can just completely wash and wear it and dry it just in your normal like wash cycle. So um, I'm going to get started by doing the shirt that everybody was raving about. So it's a really fun technique we haven't done. Emma, does anybody have questions before I get started? Um, people are just really excited. People are having a lot of great suggestions. One person suggested making a, a shibori mask, which I think is a great idea. Oh, that's a great idea. Yeah, yeah we actually just did a tie-dye mask, but I love the shibori, the blue. Yeah, that's awesome. Okay, so I'm wearing gloves. I would recommend gloves um, for this just because it gets a little bit messy with the fabric dye, um, the, the fabric paint. And so I've got a long sleeve t-shirt. And we've already started this one, but I'll show you the process. So this is just a long sleeve t-shirt. I'm actually gonna take these off while I show you guys how to um, actually sew the shirt. Um, we have got some um, either stencil tape or painter's tape. You just want like a low tack tape that you can help make a straight line across your shirt. I've got a needle and this is just floss. You could use yarn, string, um, a thicker thread, but this is just, um, I think this is DMC floss that we have. Any color will work. This is just to help create 
um, you're gonna cinch your shirt to get this pattern that we're making. So this is the pattern that we're gonna be doing. Okay, and then again, I have, I'll get to the, the dye part, but I just wanna show you how to prep this shirt. So I've got my shirt here, and the painter's tape makes it really easy because you can use this as a guide to make a straight line. So I'm gonna rip off my painter's tape or stencil tape, whatever you have, and I'm gonna do a line across my shirt. And again, we've already kind of started this because it would take so long to do each one. But I'm going to, and you can do as many lines as you want. Remember, every stitch that we put in the shirt, it's gonna create the white line. So as many, if you want a lot of lines and a lot of stripes, you're gonna put more stitches in it. If you want fewer, you're gonna put them further apart and less. So Kira, some people are asking if the thread will leave big holes in the shirt, but I don't think it will. What about you? It won't. No, I mean, I wouldn't use like a very heavy, thick yarn. Right. But um, this thread, we did this thread on this shirt and there are no holes on it. Awesome. But that's a good question. Okay, so we've already pre-threaded the needle here. So let me get this off. Not. Okay, so thread the needle, and then you want to, you are going to start, and you're going to use your sleeves, you guys can see this overhead, you're going to start, so you're going to treat the sleeves just like it's part of your shirt. You don't need to leave the sleeves out, you really want to get that stripe that goes all the way across. So we are just going to start, and you can go from the bottom up or up down, it doesn't matter, because you're just going to be doing long, loose stitches. And I am not a sewer or a stitcher, so I'm gonna set that wet, which is fine. Okay, so I'm gonna stitch this. And the reason, and I don't even have my tape lined up, the reason we're using this tape, it helps you get a really good straight line so you don't have to draw on your shirt. So that is just kind of a guide so you keep your stitches straight. Because if your stitches get like out of control, then your lines are gonna be like this, which is fine, but we want really good sharp straight lines. And so I'm just gonna go back and forth in between. And these um, stitches are about an inch um, in between each one. And Kira, is the thickness of the thread going to make um, an overall difference in the final design? No, the thread will not make a difference at all. It is just a cinch it. So I am just going to sew this. Kira, we have I did not. Of, oh, go ahead. We have a lot of people with us today from New York, Minneapolis, Great. Miami, Kentucky, Missouri, that. Colorado. Lots of people crafting with us today. Oh, good. And um, I did not tie my string off at the end because we're going to want to cinch from both ends when we're done with the stitches. So you can just leave it a little bit loose at the end. Kira, just enough that you have to pull it. Does the thread need to be the same color as the dye? No, you can use any color thread. This is green, it just happens to be what we had here. Right, because we're gonna remove it at the end, right? Yeah, this thread is just to help cinch it to create the pattern, and it's gonna go away right after we um, put the dye on the shirt. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So let me get this in here. That's why we pre-stitched this. We knew it would take a minute. And if you're worried, you know, like, oh, they're not even or perfect, again, it's very forgiving. Um, or you could go ahead and just mark off. You could take a ruler and just mark off little dots. Like I have some tape marked on here just to help me. So since I'm going so fast and not really taking my time, um, but yeah, you could absolutely mark these off, which will help you. Totally. I feel like, you know, this faux worry process is pretty forgiving no matter what you do. Any result yeah. will be a good result. Any kind of tie-dye kind of like that is right. fine. It and it's going to change. Each one's going to be completely different because it just depends where the dye um, really like penetrates the fabric and where the... Um, where the dye does not get on the shirt, that's what's gonna leave the white. So everything will be blue, but where it, 
the dye does not hit will be white, like a resist almost. And that's what you're really creating when you're doing the folds and the techniques. You're creating a resist so the dye does not um, touch that part of the fabric, if that's your white part. So you could do this on any color. You could do this on light pink, you could do it on yellow, you could do it um, really on gray, any shade. It's just, you know, the white, that's the part that's gonna show and then the blue. And you don't have to use blue. Blue is just the um, traditional shibori technique. You could use absolutely any color of this fabric creations to do it. So you could do pink, you could do purple. We just chose to stick more traditional for this class. It'd be really fun to do a red, white, and blue one since 4th of July is yeah. coming up. I love it. I'm almost done, guys. And then again, you just treat the arm like it's part of the shirt. You don't want to leave the arm out unless you don't want to stripe. So go right across the shoulder and the arms when you're doing this. Kara, Sarah wants to know if we're uh, going to dilute the paint before we put it on the shirt. We are. I will tell you, give me two seconds and I will walk you guys through the paint. But that is a great question because we are going to dilute it. You don't want to use it right out of the bottle because it's really thick. Um, so I will um, show you the ratio of that too. And we use these um, great uh, little squirt bottles. These are actually from the baking section. I think they're Wilton. So these are great. We've used them for pouring. We've used them for a lot, but they're a great thing to have on hand. Great. Okay, so I'm going to remove my tape because that was just um, a guide to help me. Again, you could do little pencil marks if you really want to get precise and measure out. So we've done three um, sets of stitches. So that'll create three rows on your top. So what you want to do is now you can actually go ahead and tie this off so it doesn't slide through. So let's tie these off. Scissors, name. You got me a pair of scissors. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna cinch and we're gonna pull from both sides so it meets in the middle. So you don't wanna just yank from one side. You wanna pull from both sides. So can you guys see that? It's gonna cinch. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna tie it. I'm gonna wrap it. And then you're gonna tie it. And you're gonna cut this off after, so you wanna actually get a knot in there. And it helps sometimes if you have an extra set of hands to get a really good tight knot. Dylan, can you stick your finger in here so I can get... Oh, I accidentally needed a knot in this. All right, we'll just leave this one go. Hold on. Sorry, guys, that's the beauty of live. All right, you stick your finger in there? Thanks. So again, you just wanna tie a really good knot. Doesn't matter how it looks, if it's messy. And again, we're just gonna keep cinching and you're gonna pull from one side and the other side. So you want it just to meet in the middle and it's gonna create these folds. It's like almost like a fan fold that you're creating. And I'm gonna wrap it. All right, finger please. Okay, so that one's tied off. And then we're gonna do the one that I did and we're just gonna pull and pull. You wanna make sure it's like, you wanna keep kind of messing with it and make sure it's straight. See, it was kind of getting bunched. So you really want those long lines. And it helps if, again, you just pull from one side and then kind of pull from the other. So it doesn't bunch, it creates more lines. And I'm gonna tie this guy off. Okay. This random hand just comes in here. Okay. So he is tied. Okay, so then for some of the techniques, we don't wet the fabric. You can just go from dry fabric. Like I said, you don't even need to wash or you can wash to get the sizing out. Um, but this, one, this technique, we're actually going to get it wet first. So I just have a pan of water here. Um, I'm not going to lift this, but it is just a pan of tap water straight from the sink. And I'm going to submerge the shirt right in the water. Sorry, you guys can't see that. And then I'm just wringing it out. 
So you want to make sure that it gets all wet. You can do this in the sink. Um, I would not use a spray bottle. I would have some kind of pan or tray that you can actually get the shirt wet. So Kira, now people are interested to know how to make the shirt that you are wearing. <laughs> Um, we can do some different, I'll do some different folds and we can do this for sure. Okay, so I have it all wet. Let that sit there. And then I'm going to put my gloves on. Like I said, anything, you know, this is a little bit different than our regular acrylic paint. It is more of a, even though it's a soft fabric, like ink paint, it's going to sting. So, and now my hands are wet so I can't get my gloves on. So Kira, people are interested to know uh, why sometimes you wet the fabric and why sometimes you don't wet the fabric. Yeah, that's a great question. So if you don't wet, if you don't wet the fabric um, and you do a folding technique or that technique, you're going to get very crisp, sharp lines. If you wet the fabric, it's going to be more of a blend and you're going to get these really soft lines. That's really So nice. that's the difference. So again, it's a preference. But everything, um, a lot of the samples we have, like what I'm wearing in this, if you wet it, you get more of a blur. And if you don't, you get a more crisp, clean line. Also, when we talk about the paint, the more water you add, the more it dilutes and the lighter color you'll get. The darker, um, the less water, it'll be a darker color. So again, so many different things you can do and change it up. You can get light blue, dark blue. There's a lot of variations. Okay, so I have my navy fabric ink. I've got this great little squeezy bottle. It has like a nozzle tip on it. Again, we just got this Michael's in the baking section. You want to do a one-to-one -one ratio. So paint, water, one-to-one. -one. I'm just going to squeeze it right in here. You can do this right in the bottle. You don't need to pre-mix it and then put it in the bottle. You can go straight to your bottle. I'm going to put the whole thing in here just so I have it. And these will keep after, so you could save them. You know, if you have an airtight lid, you can put on it, so you can go back and reuse it later. That's a great tip. Okay, then I just have some tap water here. I'm gonna do it one-to-one. -one. I'm just gonna eyeball it. And then I'm gonna put this on. And then what you wanna do is you wanna make sure you shake it very well. So either put the lid back on or your finger over the top and you wanna shake it. Okay. And then what we're gonna do, get messy here. You want to make sure you protect and cover your workspace also, don't forget. Okay, so here's my damp shirt. And then I am going to start and start squeezing in the um, dye right onto the shirt. So can you guys see that? So Kira, Cindy wants to know, is it possible to do different colors in each section of the shirt? Yes, absolutely. So you could do blue, red, green, yellow. Absolutely, you could. Again, we're just using blue because it's the more traditional um, of the shibori when you talk about that, because it's typically done with like natural indigo dye. But this is a great way to do that. So this is the important about this part about this technique. So you want to get it in there and get it in all the creases. So you're going to use a lot of dye, and I have some extra made up here. You really want it to be watery. So that first bottle was a little bit thick and you can kind of feel it. You want it to like, um, I don't know, here you guys can see like it kind of drip out of the bottle. So you don't want it to be too thick. So you want it to really get all over the fabric. So you really want to just like massage it in there and get it in all those folds. And so you don't want to go directly up to the tie. You kind of want to go about a half inch, quarter inch away from where you made the tie and the cinch. You want to leave that white. That's going to create your stripes. Okay, so I'm just going to go. And remember, like, 
wherever your hands touch, they have dye on them now or your gloves. So anything you touch is gonna get that dye on them. Mm -hmm. I've made that mistake. So again, we're gonna go about a half inch, quarter of an inch. And we are just going to fill in. So Kara, why are we leaving that space white? Because that's gonna create the stripe in your shirt. Okay. So that white will be your stripe. So anywhere you do not have dye, that will be white. So again, that's kind of a preference to like how much white do you want, how much blue do you want? That's good. Again, to know. I'm just gonna fill this in. Yeah. Kara, Cindy has a pretty good question. If she changes colors, should she also change her gloves? Yes, that's a great question. I would, especially if you're going like, I would do light to dark also. Yeah. So, you know, if you're gonna do a yellow or a pink and then go into your dark colors, but I would absolutely change your gloves because this is different than just our typical, like I do paint pouring and I don't wear gloves. I'm like, I'll just wash my hands later. This one's gonna um, stain your hands a little bit more and your surface. So make sure you have everything really covered. All right. So you really want to get that dye in there. So if you need to rub it a little bit and kind of massage that in. I'm going to add a little bit more water. This guy was a little thick. So I did a one-to-one -one and um, you can kind of just feel it. You want it to be a little runny because it's really thick when it comes out of the bottle. Which is great because you can, I can't open this bottle now. Uh, thank you, I mean it's funny. So, which is really great because you can, um, you can paint with this paint, like with a brush, if you wanted to hand paint on fabric, you could stencil with it. So that's what's so great about this. Mm -hmm. It leaves paint. the fabric really So soft. many things. And the fact that you can take a fabric paint that's so soft and dye with it, you know, again, when we do our um, tie dye, we're going to use the same exact paint, which is so great that you can do so much with this. And it truly is really soft. My favorite part about dyeing with fabric creations is that there's no cure time. You really just have to wait for it to dry and then you just unfold it. Unfold it and heat set it, right. It's no like, oh, we have to wait or it's like 24 hour process, like overnight. immediate gratification. Yeah, you can totally unwrap it as soon as you're done and let it dry. Yep, and they're all gonna be different. Yep. Like like the big reveal. So I have some white spots, but I don't, and you know, if you're like, oh, I want to cover that up, I'm just using my thumb and kind of rubbing that paint right into, um, right into the fabric. So you want to make sure you get the front and back. And anywhere there's not dye, that white, that's what it's going to look like. So you're like, ooh, I want to get a little bit more blue in there. And just fill that in. And again, we started with wet fabric, so it had more of like a um, a blended look. If you want harsher lines, leave your fabric dry. And you can just really massage that paint in right into all these creases and folds. So Kara, um, Samantha wants to know, is it possible to get an ombre effect with uh, fabric creations? And I think that's what you were talking about earlier, right? If you want a darker color, you add less water. And if you want a lighter color, you add more water. Yeah, so you could do a um, single color ombre. And you could even do an ombre with this. You could start navy and then just get lighter and lighter and lighter as you go up. So just mix up different quantities of water or just basically keep adding water as you go in the same bottle. That would probably be the easiest. You're not dirtying a bunch of bottles. So your first strike would be full, like just water, like your Wonder One. And then you could add a little bit more water, a little bit more water to create that ombre. Or you could do it with colors, either way. All right, I want to make sure this is good when I reveal it for you guys. Okay, I think I'm, I'm good. Okay, so have that and what a mess, right? So you want to cover your workspace really good. And then I'm just going to take my scissors and I am going to snip. Make sure you don't cut the fabric. You just want to cut off the ties that you have in between, because you're not gonna need those anymore and you're gonna be able to just pull them right out. I can't wait. 
This is the best part. Yeah. Hope it's a good one. And I have a hard time with holds. I'd rather just dye my fingers, to be honest. So there you go, it worked, you guys. So I saw some thread in there. Let me pull that out. Kira, that looks so good. Yeah. So again, you, you just take your threads really and pull them away. You don't need those anymore. So ta-da. Wow. So that's what you're going to get. That is so, so cool. So again, if we had not wet the fabric, it'd be like harsher stripes. And then this way you get this really beautiful blend. You guys can see that. Everyone loves and then you it, Kira. More stripes, less stripes. And again, what's so great is you just use the arms also. You don't need those out, so it looks like it's printed right on there. And there you go. That okay, is I'm really, stick really cool. This on the drying rack. So you want to let this dry for about 24 hours. And then you want to heat set it, which you can heat set on your dryer. Um, dry heat is what you want to heat set. You can pop it in your dryer or you can use um, a dry iron and heat set it. And all the directions are on every bottle, which is really great. So if you're like, what do I do when I get this home? Just check out the bottle and all the information's right there. Okay, so I am going to grab another piece of paper. Yeah, I'm oh, messy, messy Kara, really here. quick, Sarah has a really good question. How long after you take the string out do you have to wait before washing it? Um, so let it dry. I believe the bottle says, I don't want to tell you guys wrong. Heat set with dry iron cloth, hand wash cloth. So as once it's dry, you can um, heat set it and wash it immediately. So awesome. again, just, I, we have a drying rack here. You could hang it and let it dry. It's not going to drip because it's not super wet or like tie dye. I would still probably put something under it, like a board or a plastic bag or something, but this one's not dripping. So even though we got it wet, that fabric ink really gets into the um, fabric and it's not drippy and gooey. And it shouldn't stain your drying rack too, right? Just be, since it is paint, it's not dye, you can just take some you know, regular cleaning product to it and it'll come right off. Yeah, you can wipe it off. But again, it's, it's gonna be a little bit more than our typical acrylic paint. It's gonna stain more since it is a dye. Okay, so that one is drying. So I am going to do a um, fold. I'm gonna do a tote bag. I'm actually gonna be using clothespins. So this is just a tote bag. Um, again, got this at Michael's. They've got white, they've got ivory. Again, you can use any color. Something fun if you really wanted to do a different color and change it up, you could use a darker black fabric. So you could start with dark and actually do this with light is a different way that you could do it also. Um, I would probably start with clean gloves also. I just have one pair in here, so I'm gonna wipe them off with a baby wipe real quick, because everything I touch is gonna get dye on it right now. I love that my gloves match uh, the shibori in my shirt right now. I know, that's awesome. <laughs> okay. So, and any of these techniques can be done on anything. So you could cinch the bag, you could cinch a pillowcase, you could cinch a large piece of fabric if you want to just create a piece of art or some fabric to craft with after. You could absolutely do that. Okay, so we are going to just do a simple accordion fold with our bag. So I am going to, and we're going to go about, you know, almost two inches, and we are going to fold. Can't get a good grip on this, you guys. Here we go with these silly gloves on. We are going to fold back and forth. And you want to make sure that you are flipping over every time. Okay, so once we have our fold, then we're going to take clothespins, and these are just regular everyday clothespins. We've used them before, so they've already got some dye on them. And you are just going to Clip the folds. And we are going to go about an inch apart. And you can play with it and change it up. Everyone's going to be different. You could put more, you could put less. So we're going to clip these on. Again, this is just a canvas bag, so this is a completely different fabric. That the shirt that I had was more like a 
spandexy and some cotton. It was very stretchy. This is a canvas and the dye is going to work. The fabric creations is going to work just as well on both fabrics. It's just so great. And this one I'm going to do dry. I'm not going to wet this one. And again, it depends what kind of look. If you want more of a sharper line and more defined pattern, or you want more of um, like a soft, more fade. And then I'm going to clip in between each one of these. So I'm going to alternate. You guys can see that. You could use binder clips if you had them. If you didn't have clothes pins. These are the clothes pins with the um, springs on them. So that is important to grips. Kara Maria saying how this could be a really great family activity, which I totally agree with. Yes. Kids would have so much fun doing all the folding and the clipping, yep. and then it's instant. Like you said, it's not like tie dyeing where you need to wait or it needs to sit outside. Like you're just done when you're done, and you have a finished piece. And again, I once it dries, that. then you can just wear it. And I truly, literally, just grab this out of the room. You know, we've shown it in another video, and I was like, I'm gonna wear this. It is super soft, hasn't even been washed, um, and it's it's really great. So it is a great product and so soft. Like, some fabric uh, paints are like really crunchy and this one is just very soft and easy to use. It's very forgiving also. I feel like this is really great for kids because it's just super immediate and they don't have to wait so long, you know? They're really excited just to see it as soon as it's done. Yeah, and tie-dyeing is such a hot trend right now. It is everywhere. Um, so what a great way to be able to DIY it, especially, you know, if you're home and like, say you have a shirt or your kids have a shirt, there's a stain on it, like and just tie dye it. Like you could totally get rid of that stain and revive your piece, which is a great thing to do. Like you're kind of upcycling your whole wardrobe for the summer. Okay. So I have my clothespins on there. Again, I'm just going to take my Navy Fabric Creations and we've done one-to-one -one ratio. Just using these awesome squirt bottles. We got these at Michael's. These are just great to have on hand. And I am going to start dyeing. So I am just going to put my dye. And I'm going to squirt it right around my clothespins. Kind of like pouring, we have been doing. And you can see it is, um, it's going right in there, even though it's canvas. So you can see the different kind of fabrics that you can use. So this is canvas. We did it on like a cotton spandex. You could do it on cotton. We did a, um, we have a pillowcase I can show you. It was like a micro suede. It worked great on there. So I'm just gonna get all in there. And remember, wherever there is not dye, that's gonna be white. So again, it's up to you, the pattern you're creating. So you could even fold the handles if you wanted to. I'm going to leave these handles white, but you could do the same thing and like almost accordion and fold them and die right on the handles. So I'm going to flip that over. I'm going to do the other side. And then does anybody else have any questions? Yeah, some people are worrying um, if the fabric creations will stain their dryer, but I think if they put, you know, a heat cloth over their design and they use an, uh, a dry iron, if they're worried about it, then they won't have to worry about it. What do you think, Kira? Yeah, so put it, so dryer, as long as you wanna wait and make sure that your shirt or whatever you're making is completely air dry before you pop it in there. But I have done it in my own washer, dryer, and I've had not one issue. It has not bled on anything. Um, and again, I would just pop it in a heat dryer. If you follow the directions and heat set it, you're not going to have an issue at all. And it's going to be permanently in that fabric. Same with your iron. If you're nervous, just get a, um, you know, like a pillowcase or linen cloth or towel and heat set it. Um, but I have not had an issue. So, and again, just throw it in your normal wash. There's directions on the bottle too but it should not bleed and ruin anything. Awesome. Maria saying this kind of reminds her of a camp activity. Of a what? Camp activity. Yes. 
I love that. Mm -hmm. so I'm gonna pull this off. So I hope this works. I'm gonna pull these guys off. And again, this is so great too. You could just reuse all these things. So you've got rubber bands, you've got um, clothes pins, like so many different things the kids can get into, or you know, you can come up with different patterns and designs. Everyone's gonna be different, which is great. Kira, Giovanna wants to know, could you also dye the handle as well? You could, yep. So absolutely. So oh, Kira, that looks awesome. Yes, you could absolutely dye the handle. You could um, yeah, this one's really pretty. So do you see how crisp the lines are compared to the shirt? And that's because we did not wet the fabric. So if you want it to be, look like it like bled a little bit and it's more softer, just wet your fabric. But if not, you're gonna get the sharper lines. So two completely different looks. And I love kind of like the dot pattern that you get with this, the dots and stripes. It's like very tribal, I love it. Yeah, that's um, awesome, very chic. Yeah, and you could dye the handle. So you could fold the handle, you could do the same technique. You could dye it all one color. It'd be really cute even if you wrapped it in yarn and did some tassels, make like a great gift bag, each bag also. That's what I love so, about this project. You can get really creative with it. You can add yeah, a lot of things. And then you just yeah. let this dry. So again, no dripping. I mean, I put a lot on there and it's not, I mean, it's messy on your surface, but otherwise you're not gonna end up with dye everywhere, which is really great too. Okay, so I'm gonna let him dry. And then I'm gonna do, if we have time, I'm gonna do um, one more folding technique. Um, if you guys wanna see. And Kira, so Zen has a question. What happens if you fold the fabric first and then you spray it after you've already folded it? It'd probably be like- You can absolutely do that. It just won't, so my only thing is that, and this may be a beautiful look, if you get the fabric all wet, you're gonna have the same look. If the fabric is wet in some places and dry in some places, you may get some harsh lines and some more blurred lines, but that might be really great. Like I would try it, try it on a scrap piece of fabric. Yeah, and maybe you really get cool. like some softer design and some harder designs would be really pretty. So that's a great idea, I love that. I, I wanna see that. Okay, so I'm gonna do this um, triangle technique. And I'm just gonna use, I'm gonna take my gloves off for a second, guys. I'm fumbling around here today on a Friday with these giant rubber gloves on. So yeah, if you aren't um, shaboring along with us right now, I think this is a great fun thing to do. You know, we've got a weekend coming up. We've got a long weekend coming up with a holiday and everybody, I mean, hopefully is safe and sound inside. And if you have some time, this is a great activity to do for everybody too, which I love that you could do it if you just want to create some really awesome fashion or home decor pieces, um, get the kids involved. You know, like I said, we've done wall hangings. You could do a larger piece. You could even do like an ottoman or cover a stool with it, cover some jars. You can mod podge it right onto um, a piece of furniture. Like there's so many things you can do. You're making your own fabric. Okay, so I'm just going to um, take another white t-shirt. We got this at Michael's and they've, they've really got some great soft t-shirts also um, at Michael's. They're not like those crunchy hard square boxes. They're really nice. So we grabbed this at Michael's and I am going to do, I'm going to do the same accordion fold and we're just going to incorporate the sleeves right into it. So I'm going to fold back and forth. Kira, Dory wants to know hope you can use any type of fabric. You can. So you really want, the best is like a tight, um, tight weave fabric, but you can use cotton and weave canvas. You can use um, basically anything that you can dye fabric wise, we've done and it's worked well. Um, the t-shirt that I did, the long sleeve is more like a cotton spandex, so it's stretch. Um, this t-shirt is more just like a regular cotton t-shirt. I just did a canvas bag. So um, it'll, anything will really work. Again, you don't have to wash it before. A lot of fabrics have sizing in them and that sometimes can create a resist. But if you're worried about the fabric or it's something different that you haven't tried, I would go ahead and just wash and dry it and then go ahead and dye it. So you're always guaranteed a great result. Okay, I am going to fold this. 
should have got little mini t-shirts or something. This is taking up so much room. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then I am just going to fold in my sleeve. And then I'm going to do almost like a football fold. I'm going to go, I'm going to fold a triangle up. And then a triangle back. And you're going to keep doing this. So you want to end up with a triangle. So you want to fold on the bottom and then flip it around and fold on the top. So you're going to end up with a triangle. And it's going to get pretty thick depending on the size of your material or your shirt. It's kind of thick. Kira, Sydney has a great question. Is it okay to put the shirt outside in the heat to dry? Um, you can, but it'll, I mean, it takes about 24 hours. There's no reason you can't dry it outside. Absolutely, it'll speed up the yeah, process. For sure. And depending on, um, I really hope that works, guys. <laughs> um, I think I might actually, that's getting really thick. I think I might actually switch to a piece of fabric so you guys can see it better because I'm worried. Um, but I didn't get a good fold on there. All right, I'm gonna use this pillowcase. It's gonna work better. So I'm gonna do the same thing. Sorry about that, guys. I'm gonna refold this. And just to remind everyone, we're using navy fabric creations. We have some questions yeah. about what, what paint we're using. Yep, so we are using Fabric Creations, which is a super soft fabric paint. It is amazing. It is super, super duper soft once it dries. Okay, so there, I hope you guys can see that better. I am just going to football fold this up. And again, it will work for a t-shirt. I just wanna make sure that we get good results and everybody can see what we're doing. Here are so some people have been asking, um, is it better to hang it to dry or can you leave it on a flat surface to dry? Um, you can leave it on a flat surface, but it takes longer and you're not getting air to all of it or it may stick together. Um, actually, this one, we made it, it was just laying flat to dry and we kind of had to pull it apart after. So I would recommend a hanger or a drying rack works best. That's helpful. We are just finishing folding this guy. You want to end up with a triangle. You have a pretty thick triangle, but again, um, it will work on the shirt technique. This will work on a bag. It was just easier to show you guys. I switched to this color piece that we had. Okay, so now that we have our triangle, set that aside for a minute. And then we are using um, these wood coasters. So again, we got these from Michael's. These are, they come in a four pack. They're about a four by four square. You could use scrap wood if you had it, but these coasters are really great. They're like the perfect size for this. So we're gonna use those and rubber bands. And I am going to place, kind of unfolded while I was talking to you guys. You're going Here, to place your Marie. triangle fold. Yeah. Adi and Marie okay. are just saying how much fun they're having. They think they're, they think it's so much fun. It's super relaxing. Everyone keeps commenting that. Oh, good. You have a whole new wardrobe by the end of the weekend if you start exactly. now. <laughs> it looks like a lot of people are crafting along with us, which is awesome. Oh, good. Okay, so you're going to take your two wood squares and you're going to almost make like an ice cream sandwich, uh -huh. like an Oreo. You're going to put your shirt right in the middle and you're gonna do your two pieces of wood on the end. And then you're gonna take rubber bands and you're gonna place them over. And depending on the size of the rubber band, if you need to wrap it twice or just once. And I'm gonna go one across and then one across the other way. Whoop, that broke. One across the other way to secure it. And then I'm gonna just place a couple extra rubber bands on there to really hold it. So you're gonna end up with that. So two pieces of wood with your triangle fold in between. All right, 
So we have our fold. Then I'm just going to take the same um, ratio, our Fabric Creations. I'm gonna use navy. You can use absolutely any color of the Fabric Creations will work, same ratio. The less water, the darker your paint color, it'll stay true to the color in the bottle. And then the more water, it'll lighten it up. And you can do absolutely any color. You could do multiple colors also. Um, we just chose navy because it's closest to the shibori technique that we're talking about, which is all about the folding. Okay. So I have my um, pillowcase sandwich, and then I'm just going to take my paint here, and you are just going to pour it on, and you want to cover the ends, and you want to go right around the rubber bands. So you want to cover that all up, all that white fabric up. You guys can see that. So you want to get in between the rubber bands, and be careful. I think Jesse said this last week when you're working with your rubber band, it tends to fling the paint. So you just want to be careful that you're not flinging paint everywhere. So you want to like really stick it in between the rubber bands. And Kira, what's the point of the wood coasters? Uh -huh. So that will um, keep it folded and where those wood are and where the folds are, no paint will get to it. So it's like creating that resist. Awesome. So that's why the rubber bands are really important that you keep them um, tight because then the um, paint will not get on there. And that's what's so great, this paint doesn't really leak. So if you put it on, it's not just gonna go through the whole shirt, which is great. You have a lot of control over it because you're, it's thick and you're adding water, so you can really control it. And that's why I like these squeezy bottles also, because you do have a lot of control. Okay, so we've got this guy all covered. And again, my favorite part about this is just immediate. You can just take it off. You don't need to like wait for it to dry or anything. So we've covered all our sides and edges. And again, you can reuse all this. These are these great wood coasters that come in a four pack. Um, you could use scraps of wood, depending on what you're dying, if you want something bigger. So say you're doing um, a larger piece of fabric or something that's really thick, you could use larger pieces of wood. This one just works great for what we do here. I'm going to take this off. Wait. Time for the big reveal. This part. That looks really there you cool. Go. I think that's my so, favorite one yet, Kira. Yeah, I really like that. So it turned out great. So you get those really great crisp lines. And if I would have wet this again, it would have been a little bit more blurry, but I really like the lines on here, especially on camera. You can see it with the camera. Sorry, guys. You can see it so well. That would make such a great beautiful. gift to too. I know, some throw like pillows. That. Yeah. It'd be great to do outdoor also, like for your you know, outdoor furniture. Great gift, I love that. And then again, you could use this as a pillowcase or again, just cut it. If you could frame it, if there's a section you really like, you could frame it on your wall. We showed how to put it in embroidery hoops. Um, so many different things you can do with it. And Kira, since you oh. have like a really flat piece of fabric, could you use Mod Podge to adhere it to like a garden pot or something like that? Absolutely. So you could wrap a terracotta pot. Again, you could upholster with it if you have a stool or an ottoman, anything like that. You could put it on a tabletop. And again, Mod Podge, you could use outdoor, you could use hard coat, um, you could use gloss, matte, any of that would work great on this. Fabric to fabric even. So we use Mod Podge fabric, I just got this wet but in this tote bag, so we did two different techniques. So we did um, kind of like more blended and then we did a heart in a different technique and then Mod Podge did it right to the tote. So you can even cut out letters, you can personalize it. You know, you could even run it through the Cricut, use a stencil, cut out some shapes. So tons of things you can do with this, I love this. That looks awesome. People are loving it too, Kira, they're really excited. Great. Does Everything anybody safe. have any other questions? This was really fun. A good way to end the week, a good Friday yeah, project, definitely. right? You can get all these supplies at michaels.com um, or in the store if you have curbside. So lots of ways to get this, um, the fabric creations to you. So that is really important. This is a great product. It's so soft. Um, like I said, I literally pulled this out of the studio, um, did not even wash it and it's really, really soft. Um, which makes it so great. It's so different than just traditional regular dye and um, fabric paint. So um, 
I don't know, Emma, do you want to pick a winner? Yeah, sure. All right, so we're picking randomly. The winner is Elise Chan. So Elise, if you want to go onto our Plaid Crafts Facebook page and just send us a message, we'll hook you up with your $50 worth of Plaid products. Awesome. Well, congratulations. Thank you, everybody, for joining. Thank you, Michaels, for having us again. We love being here. We love crafting with everybody and chatting and all your suggestions and ideas. You guys have so many great ideas. Um, we definitely like keep those in our mind when we're making projects. Yeah, so sure. thank you. Um, Jessie will be back Monday night with a Let's Paint. So um, she's painting some more florals. We've got more tie-dye next week. So we'll be back. Um, I think actually maybe after the holiday we're tie-dye, but I know Jessie definitely has Let's Paint. So thank you guys so much. Have a great weekend. We'll see you all soon. Bye. Thanks, everybody. Bye.